I am continuing my reading here. What I'm doing in this series is to read through the entire standard works of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. This consists of the Bible, the Book of Mormon, the Doctrine and Covenants, and the Pearl of Great Price. I am reading in chronological order of events, not according to publication or volume, so I will be skipping around just a little bit as I move along. I'll actually be skipping around a lot shortly when I get through the books of Moses. Probably got to get through the book, of, you know, from to the end of Judges. Then I'll really start skipping around. Anyways. We're currently in Numbers. This is chapter 31. Moses sends forth 12,000 warriors who destroy Midianites. Prey divided in Israel. None in armies of Israel were lost. This is the, I, I like this story. Very little known story. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Avenge the children of Israel of the Midianites. Afterward shalt thou be gathered unto thy people. And Moses spake unto the people, saying, Arm some of yourselves unto war, and let them go against the Midianites, and avenge the Lord of Midian. Of every tribe, a thousand that throughout all the tribes of Israel shall ye send to the war. So there were delivered out of the thousands of Israel a thousand of every tribe, twelve thousand armed men. And remember, Levi is not a tribe, in the, does not contribute militarily to Israel. They're not a military tribe. There's a priestly tribe. But Joseph is divided into Manasseh and Ephraim, so we have 12 tribes, 12,000 men. And Moses sent them to the war, a thousand of every tribe, them and Phinehas, the son of Eleazar, the priest, to the war, with the holy instruments and the trumpets to blow in his hand. And they warred against the Midianites as the Lord commanded Moses, and they slew all the males. And they slew the kings of Midian, beside the rest of them that were slain, namely Evi, and Rechem, and Zur, and Hur, and Reba, five kings of Midian. Balaam also, the son of Beor, they slew with the sword. And the children of Israel took all the women of Midian captives, and their little ones, and took the spoil of all their cattle, and all their flocks, and all their goods. And they burnt all their cities wherein they dwelt, and all their goodly castles with fire. And they took all the spoil, and all the prey, both of men and of beasts, and they brought the captives and the prey and the spoil unto Moses and Eleazar the priest, and unto the congregation of the children of Israel, unto the camp at the plains of Moab, which are by Jordan near Jericho. Okay, here's an interesting one. It says that they, they destroyed all the men, and they killed the kings, five kings. So, of course, Midian, as I've said in previous videos, most of these peoples are not unified nations. They're tribal peoples. They may be of the same race or the same family, but they are broken up into tribes. So we have five kings of Midian. I guarantee you they didn't kill Jethro. So when it says it kills all the males, it's talking about the males of these five kings, not of all the Midianites. Because again, later on, the Midianites come back. There are other kings of Midian very shortly, matter of fact. Within a hundred years, you've got more kings of Midian that are marching out with large armies. If they wiped out all the men, it would take a lot more than a hundred years to raise thousands of men for armies. This is talking about five kings, five tribes of Midian, five cities. May have been a couple more than five cities, but it was generally these five cities of Midian. They destroyed all the men. They took all the women captive. They took all the animals. They took all the money. They, just, they burnt the cities to the ground. But remember, this wasn't all Midianites. This was these five cities. Jethro was of Midian. I guarantee you they didn't kill him. Now, he might have already been dead. This is 40 years afterwards, and he's definitely older than Moses since Moses married his daughter. But they wouldn't have killed his family either. His family would have still been at least some of them righteous. So you, you got to put this in perspective. Also note that they kill Balaam. Remember, Balaam's the guy that Balak hired, and he gave all these blessings to Israel, and Balak threatened to kill him and all that. But this is where we start getting the evidence that Balaam, even though he only spoke what God told him to say, this is where we get the, the hints and the evidence that Balaam, what he actually did, is just after the story of Balaam is when we get the whoredoms of Israel joining with the Moabites, worshiping their gods, sacrificing, and we get the one guy, uh, Zimri, having his adulterous affair with one of the Midianite women. Because Balaam, 
told them to. He told Moab and Midian, if you want to curse Israel, you've got to get them to sin. Remember, I mentioned it in, in uh, chapter 23, where it says God can't curse them because they're not, they're not doing anything worthy of cursing. They're, they're living a generally righteous life. Balaam told them, if you want to curse them, all you have to do is tempt them, seduce them into your ways, and God will curse them. That's what happened. Now, Balaam, along with the rest of the Midianites, Balaam, was, we have no indication that he is a Midianite, but he was among the Midianites when God sent them out. He said, destroy the Midianites because they tempted Israel. They tried to destroy you with their wickedness. Balaam was among the ones that were killed. Anyways, verse 13. And Moses and... Oh, one second, one second. And Moses and Eleazar the priest and all the princes of the congregation went forth to meet them without the camp. And Moses was wroth with the officers of the host, with the captains over thousands and captains over hundreds, which came from the battle. And Moses said unto them, Have ye saved all the women alive? Behold, these caused the children of Israel through the counsel of Balaam to commit trespass against the Lord in the matter of Peor. And there was a plague among the congregation of the Lord. Now therefore kill every male among the little ones, and kill every woman that hath known man by lying with him. But all the women children that have not known a man by lying with him, keep alive for yourselves. And do ye abide without the camp seven days, whosoever hath killed any person, and whosoever hath touched any slain. Purify both yourselves and your captives on the third day and on the seventh day, and purify all your raiment and all that is made of skins and all work of goat's hair and all things made of wood. So they're going to say, yes. Through the counsel of Balaam to commit trespass against the Lord. So in other words, the Midianites seduced Israel because Balaam told them to. He wanted, Balaam wanted the money that Balak had, offered, wanted the prestige and everything. And he told them how to get Israel cursed. And Moses, so they went, they killed all the men and they captured all the women and all the children and brought them back. And Moses saying, no. These are the people that caused such problems, such devastation among Israel. Kill them all. That all men, all males, kill them. All females who have not, basically have not have, who have not had sex, kill them. Kill the ones who have had sex and keep the ones who haven't. The reason for this, the reason for this, and, and if the men are kept alive, even the young men they can then rise up. They can form their own armies. They can, form, they can form a rebellion against Israel. If you bring them into the camp, they are the ones most likely to form a rebellion. The females who have not had sex, they can be married to Israelites, have children among Israel, and thus be integrated into Israel. They are, they are less likely to rebel because even though they're, they are they are Midian, their children would be half Midian and half Israel. And in this way, a rebellion is put down. The, the chance of a rebellion is reduced significantly through this uh, law. But you'll also know, I do have to point out that he does tell them, purify yourselves on the third and seventh day. This goes back to the commandment regarding the red heifer and how to purify yourself after touching a dead body. Since they all went to war, they all killed various people, they all need to be purified. All these 12,000 men, none of them can come back into the camp for a week until they've been purified, which takes a week. So, Verse 21, And Eleazar the priest said unto the men of war which went to battle, which went to the battle, This is the ordinance of the law which the Lord commanded Moses. Only the gold and the silver, the brass, the iron, the tin, and the lead Everything that may abide the fire, ye shall make it go through the fire, and it shall be clean. Nevertheless, it shall be purified with the water of separation. And all that abideth not the fire, ye shall make go through the water. And ye shall wash your clothes on the seventh day, and ye shall be clean. And afterward ye shall come unto the camp, <laughs> into the camp. So not only do they have to purify themselves, they have to purify all the spoils that they took. If it, can, if it can stand the heat of a fire, you purify it first in fire, then in water. So all the metal. The clothes and all that stuff, we just need to purify in the water. 
verse 25. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Take the sum of the prey that was taken, both of man and of beast, thou and Eleazar the priest, and the chief fathers of the congregation, and divide the prey into two parts, between them that took the war upon them, who went out to battle, and between all the congregation. And levy a tribute unto the Lord of the men of, of war which went out to battle, one soul of five hundred, both of the persons, and of the beeves, and of the asses, and of the sheep. Take it of their half, and give it unto Eleazar, the priest, for an heave offering of the Lord. And of the children of Israel's half, thou shalt take one portion of fifty of the persons, of the, of the beeves, of the asses, and of the flocks, of all manner of beasts, and give them unto the Levites, which keep the charge of the tabernacle of the Lord. And Moses and Eleazar the priest did as the Lord commanded Moses, and the booty, being the rest of the prey which the men of war had caught, was six hundred thousand and seventy thousand and five hundred sheep, and threescore and twelve thousand beeves, and threescore and one thousand asses, and thirty and two thousand persons in all, of, of women that had not known man by lying with them. And the half which was portioned to them, portioned of them that went out to war, was a number three hundred thousand and seven and thirty thousand and five hundred sheep. And the Lord's tribute of the sheep was six hundred and three score and fifteen. And the bees were thirty and six thousand of the Lord, of which the Lord's tribute was three score and twelve. And the asses were thirty thousand and five hundred, of which the th Lord's tribute was three score and one. And the persons were sixteen thousand, of which the Lord's tribute was thirty and two persons. And Moses gave the tribute, which was the Lord's heave offering, unto Eleazar the priest, as the Lord commanded Moses. And of the children of Israel's half, which Moses divided from the men that warred, now the half that pertained unto the congregation, was three hundred thousand and thirty thousand and seven thousand and five hundred sheep and thirty and six thousand beeves and thirty thousand asses and five hundred and sixteen thousand persons. Even of the children of Israel's half, Moses took one portion of fifty, both of man and of beast, and gave them unto the Levites, which kept the charge of the tabernacle of the Lord, as the Lord commanded Moses. And the officers, which were over the hook, which were over thousands of the host, the captains of thousands and captains of hundreds, came near unto Moses. And they said unto Moses, Thy servants have taken the sum of the men of war, which are under our charge, and there lacketh not one man of us. We have therefore brought an oblation for the Lord, that what every man hath gotten of jewels of gold, chains and bracelets and rings, earrings and tablets, to make an atonement for our souls before the Lord. And Moses and Eleazar the priest took the gold of them, even all wrought jewels, and all the gold of the offering that they offered up to the Lord of the captains of thousands and of captains of hundreds was sixteen thousand seven hundred and fifty shekels. For the men of war had taken spoil every man for himself. And Moses and Eleazar the priest took the gold of the captains of thousands and of hundreds and brought it into the tabernacle of the congregation for a memorial for the children of Israel before the Lord. Yeah, sorry, this, is, this chapter is a little bit longer, a little bit repetitive too, but you'll note, I like this. The spoils the, of the animals and the, the women that were left over, certain they were, who were turned in, they were, they were made slaves or they were married, however you want to look at it, you know, it, both things probably happened. But anyways, of the animals and of the women, we take it in half. And the 12,000 men that went to war get half. They're the ones that did the work, so they get a larger portion per person. And the rest of it goes to the congregation. Now, you'll note that neither of these include the Levites. The Levites did not go to war, nor are they considered part of the congregation. They are the priests, or they are, they are the priesthood class. So we take the half of the 12,000, we take one of every 500, and give it to Eleazar, who is the high priest. That's his personal uh, the, the tithing paid to him. Take one of every 50 of the half given to the congregation to give to the rest of the Levites. This is why we're taking more. The congregation has to give more because they did less. And they give it to more people. There we go. But no, nobody died. None of the Israelites died in this fight. 12,000 people went out. Not a single one of them died. That is miraculous. Just like the, you know, the 2,000 stripling warriors of Helaman. And I love that they come out. They were the, they got to keep all the money, all the objects, all, all the all the, the anything that wasn't alive, 
was kept by the soldiers. That was their payment for going to war, basically, in a sense. But when all the captains found out that nobody had died, they all brought an offering of thank you, of gratitude to the Lord. And I love that. But this video is getting too long already, so I will see you in the next one.